<laughs> we have been having the a wild a wild week we've been having a wild year really but uh rogers got a today robin blew a radiator hose i actually thought it was a radiator but it was just a hose moon he gets up there and cuts chews a piece off the end of it and uh bolts it back up before he even got that done roger gets on the radio and says i got a flat tire on irma it's like oh man so we're gonna work on this flat tire while these guys get through here and robin set up our yard and just up there around the corner Folks, John May. Here comes Roger. What? I can deal with it. Can you make it work? Yeah. I ain't even told him about my mistake yet. We'll keep that to ourselves. I might have screwed up that rear end. And pedal they got a clutch in these skidders those of you not familiar with these john deere skidders the transmission is a constant mass transmission it's got clutch packs in it that runs it you never change gears you just change clutch packs so like to get different gearing one of them's a reverser clutch to where it engages a uh what a a a, a uh Post it on a vegetator. But in the other clutches, they, you know, you put in different combinations to get different gears. So, uh, there's an engine pedal in there. What that does is just kills the hydraulic power going to the clutch pack so they'll slip and then you can use it for like a clutch. But even though you're not going to actually change the mesh of gears. So, it's just a kind of a funky setup. So, we're going to take this off and I'm gonna put you all where you can see the skitters go through and we'll pull his tire off. John Moon says if we need any help, he'll find somebody for us. <laughs> we'll unpack the crane and get, get set up. So there's John Moon, he's over there. Oh, I got, there's a gauntlet of little white oak trees. He's trying to save this little white oak tree right here. Then he'll use that red oak tree to, to bump down and go around. See how he's pushing down on it? And using that stump over there and he's pushing down to get around that turn. Oh, he actually bumped a tree though. Daggone limb holding. Timber cutter's fault. That's my fault, I cut that. All right. Screw off, time's over, let's get to work. I tell you, when you get mechanized and logging to the point where we're at right now, you get to where you do so much mechanic work. Uh, to keep the wood moving and stuff like that and now i remember when we transferred from mechanical log and lumberjack type of logging to machinery operator style logging the constantly lumberjack style logging it's it wears you out more physically but lumberjack style logging you're never cognitively screwed and so often in mechanical logging you your cognitive mindset is just always in overload you, you get it's good i mean it really is good you, you can really get to where you just you're 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 drawn to it because of the mental struggle you deal with to do mechanical logging and I like it and, um, 
it don't always feel good, you know, but uh, you get to where you're, you, you're, you train your brain, where your brain gets more and more used to thinking outside the box, uh, shaving nickels off of this, that, and the other, figuring out how to be more self-sufficient, um, the sort of things like that, man. It really, and then, and then, rinse and repeat. You know, you got the more, the more tires you change, the better you get at. It. The more hoses you change, the better you get at. It. The more cylinders you pack, the better you get at. It. The more rear ends you mess with, the better you get at. It, which I'm, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, all of the things. You know, the more diagnostics you do, the better you get at diagnostics. You know, it's just. And then when you incorporate that into flow, whereas when you're doing lumberjack logging, it, it's so much simpler mentally, but physically tougher and more butcherous and way more dangerous. You know, this is less dangerous by far, but uh, brain-wise, it just sucks on you brain-wise, you know. And uh, just thought I'd share that with y'all. John Moon, get him a Tiger Cat drag. See, the uh, Din Din's right up there loading tiny. So Moon's using that stockpile. He's climbing a hill with a lot of load to keep him his wheel speed up. But then when he gets up top, he's getting him a big Tiger Cat loaf. Oh, yeah? It ain't gonna happen. Nope, not today. He's cussing right now. He's going, son of a biscuit. These trees are big. They're nice. They're good trees. And Roger has a heck of a cylinder leak. I'll tell you, every fall our equipment gets ragged out. In the wintertime, we catch up the maintenance. <laughs> it's, this fall is going to suck by the time we get it done. Ugh going to suck by the time we get her done bud by the time we get her done bud oh by the time we get her done Them Goodyear tires are 26s and they're old. Jump. Pretty much baloney rinds. We're just trying to kick the can down the road. We got new tires on most rest of the skitters, but. Roger said, I'll run the old tires, whatever. I'd say he's about ready for some new tires by now. Here's what kind of shape the tires in. Look at this. I mean, it's just a piece of crap. These tires is old. I got them for a good deal. 
Probably not as good a deal as I thought, but it did kick the can down the road for a few years while we paid off debt and stuff like that. But now we're buying these good fiery stones and, and uh, log stomper, uh, I forgot what the other brand is. What's that other brand of tires? Hell, it's on the side of the skitter. There's a rubber cutter. These are rubber cut trees. They just kind of drive over them, slop top them, and then take them out to Robin, and Robin will clean them up better. And there goes Tiny. Oh, Tiny's coming in. Robin's telling him, come on in, good buddy. Roger, how many forks can you fit on one drag? It's a good thing he's got a wide skid road. I just give him Hades. And this landowner's got a bunch of good white oak growing back, so we gotta be extra careful. Those of you don't know are chink pin. Chink pin, chink pin. Chink pin everywhere. Chink pin. Chink pin, chink pin, chink pin, chink pin, chink pin, chink pin. Whole bunch of them. More there. More down there. In the very bottom there's a pile of walnuts. And me and Derek's been sweating bullets, but we I don't think we've killed a walnut yet down there, which is wild because there's a lot of walnuts. Now, as long as we get them skidded out of there without tearing up any walnuts, we got it. But there's a group of poplar coming back. Look at all them stems and their juicy stems. And where it's real dark back there is pine. It's growing pine back there, so. I think they might have marked a couple in there just to give it a little room, but nothing major. And then there's the last run I cut. I try to cut runs with Brutus. And I'll bring the sides in and then come through topping them and bringing them all and laying them all out. It ain't perfect. It ain't pretty like a lot of the textbook loggers do, but it's good enough. Let's get back to it. Now, wait a minute, Derek. I didn't think anybody here read anyways. <laughs> well, I do have a little while. Every once in a great, great while. <laughs> Roger said he's got that hooked on Phoenix. <laughs> Get up here, I'll turn you over. I'll take you all with me. Well, you're on the green team today. I gotta be nice to you now. Yeah, be converted. I think he's been a double agent the whole time. Go with his looks for you, boys. He's a mastermind at espionage. Well, you don't end up with all the Adam boys on accident, Robin. I grabbed one little limb off that one back here and 
Tubby, Tubby. Don't want to go my way. I've been working on that skitter. I'm too daggone high strung. So today we have had breakdown upon break. Let's see. We start out. Why do I smell antifreeze? Because I worked on Robin's radiator hose, that's why. So, the fans are backing up at the mill. Uh, one of my main men, uh, I guess, uh, <laughs> I guess he crawled in the bottle the other day and he crawled out the other side yet, so I don't know. So this morning we started some bands going around the ballroom. Got the meal started up. And the guys are sawing pretty good, but I worry about Alex. He's down there grading by himself. I just bugged the crap out of me. And they were sawing poplar today. Come on, over there. Oh, you are a beautiful tree and you lay where you're supposed to. Even if you chewed a little side out of the stuff. Of course, yesterday was pretty much the day from hell. Johnny's uh, grapple tong tried to break off on her boom. Tried to fix it out in the middle of the field. There my crane's acting up on Waddy. I ain't figured it out yet. It's got a, it runs slow. It's electrical, it ain't hydraulic. But uh, it gets better as you run it. So I, I don't know. When you first start up, it's cold, it acts up. And then when it gets... But it's up top, it ain't down low. It might be in that valve, in that valve system on the crane itself. Radiator hose. My man, uh, 
Come on a little bit off, put it right back on. Worked out good. Then Roger got his flat tire, and then now I think that rear end might be screwed up in that skitter. The one we redone this winter, I think I might have made a mistake on the dippy lock side. I don't know. Dippy lock seal, one of the dippy lock seals is chewed out of it. And there's our pile of running trees. See, all the trees around that area just run that windrow and then on out they go. If I can sneak past these trees, I'll crawl out of here and head over there by Derek. 